and um, welcome back to my channel here. Um, so for those of you who watched last night, I did a video on the, the pendants, but I feel like, um, well, I'm rather disappointed in the way it turned out. I feel like I rushed through it a bit and I was super distracted throughout the whole thing. So I thought that this morning, well, this afternoon, I will just quickly um, go over it again and take a little bit more time and I'm a little bit more prepared this morning, but I mean, this is me. Organization is not my strong suit. So there might still be a bit of um, chaos happening on my side and I apologize for that. But for last night's video, I um, I really just feel like it, it was really subpar and I apologize for that so I thought that this morning I will ugh, this afternoon I will just do a do-over so starting from the beginning um, I I have in the past um, in these videos for this challenge I have shown you a fair few pendants and how I put them together so all of these have been made just for this challenge and um, so I thought I'll show you how I finish them um, into being you know wearable so these ones here were from the Makume Gone Day um, but as you can see before I actually baked these I, I cut out a little hole um, and for that I used a little hole punch which um, they're listed on the on eBay as um, bootlace ferrules. Ferrules. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. But it's basically um, okay there. It's basically these tiny little um, connector things, and they cut beautiful, perfect circles. So they're well worth looking into. I have. Um, I have quite a few. Unfortunately, um, I I find it a bit hard to get a hold of them. So if you do find some um, at a sort of a reasonable price, please do let me know. Um, the other thing that I do is um, sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't put a backing on. It just really depends on what's going on for me at the time. So with this one, um, it's already got a backing on and it's got a little starting hole. So I will have to make this hole a little bit bigger um, before I can put a jump ring through it. And I'll also have to seal this um, surface technique because there's mica powders in here in the little silver bits and so if I were to just leave it open the the mica powder would eventually wear off and it would just all be turquoise um, and then for this one I wanted a dome defect but I didn't want um, the backing to be domed as well so I want the backing to be completely flat um, I mean, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing with this one just yet. But this one has no hole and it has no backing. So I need to do both of those things before this will be functional jewelry. Um, and then also what I've done is I've covered this one with some liquid Kato. Um, which is one of the, the two things that I use most often. This one has a backing and it has a hole, but that's not where I want to put my... Um, it's not how I want to string it. I want it to be hanging sort of from um, each of the corners. Um, so I'll have to put either two holes in this or I'll have to embed um, a little... Actually, I might put a bale on this one. That might be the best way to... Salute best solution for that one and then this one is another one that has no backing um, this one doesn't need to be sealed on the front because it's only um, surface texture but for this one 
I can't sand it or buff it in order to get it shiny, so I'll have to seal this one. If I want it shiny, that is, I'll have to seal it with either liquid clay or um, resin or some other form of um, sealant. But in doing so, you're more likely than not to lose the, the texture from these um, core rollers that I've used to make this. So that's something to consider. This one, once again, it's got surface textures, uh, surface um, treatments on here. It's um, acrylic paint and um, I always forget what this is called. Silver leaf? Oh, well, this is a gold leaf type um, type surface treatment. So that's you know I can't sand this as either because um, it will actually take that off, which is not exactly what I'm hoping to achieve with this one. Um, this one has a backing on it, but the sides have not been finished, so you can... Yeah, I'm, I'm just not happy with this two-tone effect here. Um, and so I will actually put um, a bit of clay just around the edge of this to make it all black. So that's what we'll do with this one. And then this little bird, bird, um, flower, which I showed last night, how I put, um, how I put a little um, jump ring on this. Um, but I wasn't happy with it, and I certainly wasn't happy with what I showed you. And so this one has been finished much in the same way. I've only moved the little um, ball of clay that I've put my uh, screw eye through higher up so that it's not um, interfering the chain or whatever it doesn't interfere at all with the, the flower petals. Um, so you know that's an option but what I'm going to actually show you today with this one is I've got this little um, finding here which would make this into a brooch which I think would be super cute not that I wear many brooches but you know it's not really the point okay I think um, I think that's about everything oh so this one here it doesn't have a hole in it and neither does this one but what I'm actually going to end up doing is I will um, drill a hole in one of these and in the other, I will actually put in my little um, screw eye so that you can see how I do that if you um, didn't watch last night, which I hope you didn't. Right, so to get started, I think, so these ones just need their, um, just need their finishing surface. So, um, I use either the Kato liquid clay, which in the clear, because it's it's beautiful. It's what's on here, and it's clay, so you know it can go back in the oven. You can, um, yeah, it's super shiny, so you can put another coat on that if you wanted to make it more um, smooth over the top. It can be sanded. It can be, you know, it's it's just it's fantastic. Um, the other thing that I quite often use oopsies, is um, this resin. So I get mine from eBay as well. It's a UV curing resin which is so super easy to use and I, I really like it but um, that being said it's it's really really hard plastic at the end of the day when it's cured. Um, and so if you had a piece like this one here, and if I were to drop it on one of the points, the resin can actually crack or chip, and it's almost impossible to recover from. So there's sort of, you know, there's drawbacks to both, um, there's drawbacks to both techniques, and um, you'll just have to figure out which would work best for the project that you're currently doing. So this has got liquid clay on it as well. Okay. So 
So, of course, these are just the two that I use. There are tons of other products out on the market, um, you know, that, that you can use that are compatible with polymer clay. And if you're not sure or, um, you know, you're sort of worried that it might compromise your clay, you could either do some experiments of your own um, by just going through... Um, going through and actually making a test piece and putting on some of whichever covering you're, you're wanting to test and then leaving it for, you know, a couple of months or whatever or even wearing it for a while and seeing if it, how it, how the, um, the clay holds up with that surface treatment. Alternatively, of course, you could always um, go doing some online research, but just remember that, you know, you don't need, um, you don't need to be a professional of any sort of caliber to be able to post stuff on the internet. So just be mindful of where you get your information from. Um, the Blue Bottle Tree is a fantastic resource for everything polymer clay related so if you were to get any information on that I'm I'd be more willing to um, trust in its accuracy or its reliability rather than some other um, lesser known source but my favorite way of finding out these things is actually just to do the experiment myself to go through and um, just, you know, try things and test them out. That way you pay what my mum calls school fees, which means, um, you know, once the lesson is learned, you'll retain that information rather than, oh, I've read it somewhere and I can't remember where. So, yeah, just, you know, just find whatever works for you and use that. So, I still don't actually know where the handle for my pasta machine is. So I've just borrowed Courtney's and hopefully she doesn't mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is this little, um, yeah, we'll just put these out the way. These, this sunflower. So first things first, I want to put just a small circle on the back just to m give myself an... Um, sort of a, a clear and even work surface on the back there. So I'm going to put this on a medium setting, medium to thin. It just it depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, some people don't like to or have a lot of trouble working with really really thin clay, and so just. As always, do what's comfortable for you. Okay. So I'm just seeing um, sort of where, oh, how big this centerpiece is here. And then I can um, just make sure that the whole thing will be covered with my um, fresh bit of clay. So of course you can do this with any color you like. You don't have to use the same color as, you know, you don't have to use a color that will um, match your piece. So for example, this this one here, I will most likely use black um, as a backing for it, just because it's safest. Um, using white is also an option, which I use sometimes, like with these hearts, but just be mindful that when you're working with white it is extremely difficult to keep it um well to keep it white to be honest so it will it's almost as if it's magically um endowed with powers to collect and attract pet hair and dust and lint and just about any other dirty thing 
that may or may not be around or maybe it just shows up a bit better so I'm just going to smooth this on here of course you can put um bacon bond or liquid clay or something in between the baked clay and the raw clay to ensure um, permanent a permanent bond here but I don't often find it necessary so I'm just actually dragging out the edges of this cutout circle and I'm dragging it um, onto the petals on the back of this flower so if you wanted to put the um, we're going to put this little pin on here. If you wanted to put it higher up, you'd have to fill in all these little gaps here in order to give yourself a, a flat surface to, flat raw clay surface to work on. But I think I will put it just somewhere in the middle. That's what I've done here. I've actually made a flat surface high up here and then put a little ball of clay that I could work my um, screw eye into. Oopsies. Okie dokie. So there we go. It, you can barely tell that there's um, been added to this just because it's been smoothed in fairly well. And then I'm going to just put this. I'd like to have it about there, I think. Okay. So I'm just going to make a little, press it in just a little bit, just enough to make it stick there. So obviously it can't leave it like this because it will come off. Um, strictly speaking, I suppose you could use. Um, some glue to hold this on but I have never ever ever found a glue that is good enough to um, maintain the bond on this so if you if you have a glue that you find works really really well then by all means glue it on there but this way I feel like it's more secure and you have to be I mean I can be quite um, quite rough with my jewelry not not intentionally it just happens um, and I have two little beautiful nieces who um, who well the one is not quite old enough but the other one loves to wear if I have a necklace on she wants to wear it okay so this is of course one of my brilliant jelly cutters and all I've done is I've just cut a shape out of on the same thickness as the circle and it's just it's just a little I don't know what you call this shape but it's cool um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over the this metal bit here and then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the circle I'm just gonna make sure that everything sticks together and that these harsh cut lines are smoothed out. Okay. I'm actually going to, oopsies, I'm going to grab a tool. You don't want um, this particular bit of clay over the top of this to be too thin because if it is it can break obviously when you're um, you know when you're wearing this or using it or when it's being worn okay, so I'm just going to grab so this is just one of those Sculpey um, dual tools they come in a set of three and it's got one end as a rubber tipped end and the other end is a ball stylus they're fabulous well worth the um, the investment and 
and it's basically I'm doing the same thing I was doing with my fingers only my fingers don't fit into those spaces there and I might actually just for good measure put a second oopsies put a second one of these guys on there just because I don't want any cracking or stress well there's going to be stress but I don't want too much um, stress on this little thin layer of clay so if we double it up and of course I you know if you're going to be Actually, no, it doesn't matter if you are or if you aren't. I used to paint before I got into and draw before I got into polymer clay. And the most satisfying thing at the end of a, a painting or a drawing or whatever was actually being able to put my name on it and go, yep, this is mine. Look, there's my name. I made this really awesome thing. Um, and even if you then just hang it in your house, you know, the painting, which most of mine are on my walls, they're not, you know, I didn't sell any. Um, then, you know, it, it's just, it's a sense of accomplishment to me. So even a jewellery that I know I'm never going to sell because I love it, like this little bumblebee pendant, I still put my um some people call it a maker's mark um you know if you have a little symbol that is associated with your brand or whatever you can use that i just use my initials because in case you couldn't tell i'm not very creative with my um with my name it literally is my name um and anna cl is my brand so I actually just put my initials on the backs of my um, my work so when you when you're finished with all of the clay on the back of this it is a good idea to just open and close the little um, pin part because can you see how it's made a little indent over there for the little spring loaded pin I don't know if that's actually showing up clearly or not but if that you know if that little hole or that little cavity wasn't there then you know that could cause problems once it's baked I'm just gonna make sure that that's clean and neat there we go right back to the maker's mark I made myself this um, it's just a clay dot it's really just it's made out of scrap clay and it's just got my initials in, on there so what I do is I just just before I pop this in the oven I just press it in there easy peasy so there's the first one done I'm quite happy with that actually so now I will put this back into the oven and bake that and once it's done then it will actually be be ready to wear I think I'm not going to put I quite like the matte finish on this one so I'm not going to put any resin on it I'm not going to put any clay on it I'm just gonna actually leave it as the as it is and because there aren't any surface techniques like there's no mica powder there's no um, ink there's no there's nothing it's just clay in this so it will it won't change or anything so it will stay you know it will stay as it is now um, even after prolonged wear it won't the colors won't fade or change in any way or rather it shouldn't, I shouldn't say it won't because I might get emails okay so now I think I will show you how I'm gonna put a bale much like I have done here so if you watch me do this 
then you already know what I'm hoping to achieve. Um, so this is for my two-part pendant here, which I think is going to be so cool. Um, so if you don't want to poke a hole in your work, like I, there's, this has already got a hole, I don't want to poke another one. And there isn't really a whole lot of clay in this area here, which makes me a little bit uncomfortable poking a hole or even drilling a, a hole um, into the top of this. So I am actually going to put a bale on it, much like this one here. So again, I need a sheet of clay. This time I think we're going for black. And I'm going to need my little skewer. So anything would work, you know, whether you want to use a, I don't know, anything that's round. A paintbrush or a, you know, anything that's round and thin would work. A toothpick even, as long as it's thick enough to um, accommodate the cord that you're hoping to string this on. That's fine. It's actually probably better if it's a little teeny weeny bit thicker that um, that would make stringing it a lot easier. So um, on the back of this I've got a backing and the texture on this, I know the camera doesn't pick it up because it's black, is I made it using this um, filter sponge and so I'm just going to Put this back through the pasta machine just to get that texture on the clay. There it is. So it's um kind of looks like carpet, it's cool. I love it. Okay. And now what I can do, or what I'm going to do, is you can use this as well to make your little bale for the top, but I like to just cut it out straight. So I'm just going to cut a tiny little rectangle here. Um, straighten that edge. Now I want to figure out how wide I want this little tube to be. So for this one, I didn't want it to sit across the whole of the top of this um, little fat triangle. And for this one, I. I think it would be fine if it was across the whole top of this um, this piece here. So I'm just measuring it, and I'm seeing about there. Cut this off there. Oh, good job. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to roll this very lightly around my little bamboo skewer, susati stick, whatever you want to call it. I know in different parts of the world it's called different things. Skewer, kebab stick, uh, susati stocky, I don't know what you want to call it. Okay. So I'm just going to line these two sides up. Now because this has got my um, my little texture on the top of it, handling it too much would sort of, um, you know, remove that. So I just want to touch it as little as possible, but I also, oopsies, I also want to make sure that this seam is completely sealed. actually removing the surface treatment or not treatment um texture on this completely around the seam okay. and there we have it perfect little tube and guys I'm actually gonna leave this stick in it just to be safe so now where the two pieces of the clay have come together, I'm actually going to stick that over the top of my um, 
piece here. But before I do that, I don't like this two-toned thing happening here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some clay. Um, and I'm actually just going to run this along the edge here. And what that's going to do is just put a thin little layer on here. which covers up the fact that I've used two different colored clays to construct this particular piece. So I'm, I'm pressing quite hard and I'm just pulling my finger along the edge. Of course, you could sand the edge of this to make sure that it's completely straight, but I didn't do that. now it's beautifully finished and what I'll do is I'll actually just grab one of my little alcohol swabs and I'll just wipe it around the edge just to make sure I have a nice smooth finish and there we have it see if you do this with white it's it's a lot harder I mean, you could, there's nothing stopping you, and I have. Um, it's just, it's a lot harder. Now I've got my little bale here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to attach this with some liquid clay. So, actually I might just make this thicker. know what's going to look good until you try it. So I'm going to find my little um, tile that I'm going to bake this on. A little glass coaster here and I'm going to put this together. Oh boy. Okay. Um, grab some. You can use bacon bond, you can use um, Fimo liquid clay. Um, I just happen to have this one on my table, so that's the one I'm using. So I'm just putting some on here. And then I'm going to attach these two guys. actually not going to bake it with the stick in it because um, wood um, often has moisture in it or it can and so um, that can cause my stick to expand in the oven. I mean it doesn't happen often and it doesn't you know it doesn't tend to um, cause problems usually but I really don't want I don't I just avoid the issue you know if, it, if the sticks not there it can't expand it can't crack my little bale that I've popped on there and you need to be so careful with this you can zap it with a heat gun just to make sure that things are gonna stay put for while it's in the oven or you can just put it in the oven like this and 
just be careful when you're carrying it over that you don't separate them or move them or oopsies drop it because that you know all of that work making sure that it's lined up and blah 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 that could you know then be off or not and of course especially if you're doing something where you've centered it and um, you know it's not just from edge to edge it could make it really tricky okay so that was bail the embedding um, of course this bail you can also put somewhere else so for this one I am actually going to use my little jelly cutter no oh, let me put the sides on it first so again oopsies I'm not happy with this two-tone well in this case it's more like four tone because it's red clay white clay and gold clay but I'm not happy with the um, the fact that there's definite layers in this so I'm just going to put some clay around it again um, I hate finishing things so the fact that I'm actually finishing a lot of these things is some would call it a miracle because I have boxes and boxes of clay pieces that you know they're mostly finished the fun part is done the clay part is done <laughs> for most of them um, I just I don't particularly enjoy the finishing part of these projects so for this one I'm going to make sure that I put this little black um, thin clay bit all the way around because I'm not actually going to have like in the last one you know the the bale covered the oh, the bale covered some of it so it wasn't necessary this one oh excuse me oh. wow um, for this one I'm going to put the bale on the back of it okay now of course you can texture it this has been textured with um, some cleaning sponge which is really really cool a friend gave it to me for Christmas so that's this one here which has these super cool little um, it's almost like elongated hexagons um, in it and it just makes a really cool texture anyway moving on so this one it really doesn't matter which side is the top which side is the bottom of the pendant that is um, obviously this is the, the outward facing part but it doesn't matter if it's that way around or that way around it's much of the same so I'm just going to very much like what we did with the um, with this one here just going to see where this goes so I've just put it on the back there and once again I'll just use something to make sure that this hole stays open and then in two parts I'm actually going to attach this so you want to make sure as always that um, who I forgot never mind I have no idea what I was about to say so I'm just going to attach this this bale here and now you don't have to drag it all the way across because if you did this the way we did with this um, pendant oh, what is this brooch here um, then obviously you know you would 
take away some of the the texture here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add some liquid clay to this. actually just going to texture it with a tiny ball stylus so I'm just going to poke holes around the edge well not holes but make little indents Centered, it's all beautiful. skewer and then I'm just going to close it and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to put little dots around here which will then end up being part of the design I mean, you don't have to use dots, you know, you can use whatever, whatever you can come up with to make sure that these stay where they're supposed to. You want to be careful as well because you don't want to scratch or dent or anything the, the sides that we've put on there, or that I've put on there. So then, once again, I'm going to not bake it with that skewer in there. But as you can see, I can now string it quite easily. And it should hang quite nicely. Okay, so that one goes off to the side to be baked as well. And then, I think I'll use this one. Let me just clear some of this away. So this one has been baked it's been finished um, I'm not entirely unhappy with the edges on this one because it's mostly white um, what I will do however is just sand it a bit because I feel like it's a bit rough but I've got a lot of black clay especially here so I'm just gonna find some wet wipes black clay um. so this one has got liquid clay over the top um, which is fine I mean liquid clay is no bother whatsoever it can go back in the oven if it needs to 
um, but if you're using something else like a resin or I don't know whatever else you use just be mindful that some things can't go back in the oven so like if you've used a glue for example um, glue doesn't not all glue can go back in the oven. Some can, some can't, much like, you know, everything else. The resins, um, I know all of the two-part resins that I have tried, the, the ones where you mix um, the hardener in with the rest of it by yourself, those ones, none of the ones that I have ever tried have held up well um, going back into the oven. So, you know, there's there's something to consider if you are using resin. Um, the UV resin, the one that I use, doesn't mind going back into the oven, but if you put it in for too long or too often, it can sort of go yellow. So there's that as well. Whereas the, um, oopsie, the liquid clay, you know, it's fine. As long as you don't, um, as long as you don't burn it. It won't change. Right, so what I use for sanding the edges of my pieces is just a cheap nail file. And, um, you know, once it's, once it's outlived its use, I feel zero guilt throwing it in the, um, in the bin. So, they're nice and flexible generally. They, um, they fit easily in your hand, obviously, because that's what they're for. And it's just, it's convenient. So, just gonna go around. If you have any questions or anything as always feel free to just pop it in the chat or even just send me a message directly either here or um, through any of the social media accounts that I have and I will really do my best to answer them for you. away all the shavings. Okay, okay. So for this one I'm actually going to put in my little Um, I'm actually going to put in one of these oh, far out. one of these guys so um, like I said I get all of my findings and things from um, uh, so gentleman in Tasmania I think and um, the store page is SS jewelry findings as in sterling silver jewelry findings um, and they have a fabulous range of products there um, 
everything from jump rings to earrings to um, these little screw eyes and you know a hundred other things in between so do look them up if you're after findings alternatively of course you can find these on eBay or on any of the, the cheap apps um, just you know be mindful that the ones that you find cheaper elsewhere might not always be um, you know they might just be rhodium coat coated or something so they might um, tarnish after a while anyway moving on so what I've got here is I've got a thick enough piece that I can actually screw something in here and it um, it won't be a problem like it will it will be fine whereas if I had something thinner like this for example there really isn't enough room to hold um, a little screwed in finding so for this one I'd either have to put a bail on the back or which I'll most likely end up doing um, is putting a hole through through it to be able to string it so. right so for this one I know that I want my piece to hang sort of oopsies, this way um, and so I'll find the middle here somewhere and I'll just get my little screw eye making sure that it's centered of course you can use you know fancy equipment like a ruler or something to measure this if you wanted to And so there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do this before when the clay is still raw and just poke it in um, a little bit. But I wouldn't suggest baking um, your piece with the metal bits embedded in it unless you're going to, um, like this one, it's going to be, or you want it to be embedded in there like this. I mean, obviously I can't take this out and put it back in after it's baked. But much like with the bamboo skewer, metal expands when it gets hot. So if this is in baked clay, then when you expand, when you put it in the oven, the clay doesn't have much. Um, it doesn't have anywhere to go. Like it's pretty solid. So when the metal expands and it has no place to go, it will push the clay apart, and you'll get cracks, which is really devastating if <laughs> you know, you've worked you've worked really hard on making this beautiful piece and then it comes out of the oven after what you know you're assuming that it's finished and then it's got a huge crack through it okay so you can either do it when it's raw and when it's raw obviously the the clay is a bit more malleable and it's less likely to crack but i still just don't put it in there um, you can just screw it in like this, but I mean it's really teeny tiny and it's, it's a little bit hard to hold and my fingers are like newborn fingers, they are so weak. Um, or you can use your little hand drill. Um, just be mindful though that if you make the hole too thick or too wide, then um, this won't necessarily stay in there so that's why I have I try to get the longer ones just because um, they're easier for me to to hold of course you can use something like a hemostat which is this, this lovely little um, bitey thing this is a medical instrument that they use to clamp um, you know arteries or whatever and when you close it you actually click it closed and then it's it's held on there tight so um, you know now I don't have to hold it this way I've just got a much larger handle to hold on to to be able to screw this in so, I don't think I need it today 
So I'm just going to slowly, slowly screw this in here. Don't want to go too fast because, again, cracking. So what I will actually do um, before I call this one done is I will add a drop of super glue. So I'll take this back out. Like this. So you can see it's got a, maybe you can't see, it's got a tiny little hole just there. Um, Find the other one. Uh, here it is. So this is just a an adhesive. So and I will actually just put a tiny little drop um, where that hole is. Just to help things stay permanently bonded. And while the glue is still wet, I'll actually just um, screw this back in. Just be careful not to get the glue like anywhere it's not supposed to go, so uh, over the front or wherever. And there you have it. There's that one. So that's another one down. And then um, the last thing I'll show you is just how to drill a hole. I mean, it's it's really so super basic that you know you, anyone could really do it. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that is part of how we finish these so I'll just demonstrate it anyway. So I generally, if I remember, which isn't always, I will um, move this clay out the way. I will try and actually put a hole in um, my pieces before I bake them. Um, so even this one has a tiny little pilot hole just there. Um, it doesn't even have to be the right size for your jump ring to fit through. But if you've got sort of a starting hole, which is what this one is, it's a lot easier to expand it and it will then definitely be in the right spot rather than, um, you know, starting from a fresh. So even even if you just were to um, make it a dent in the clay or a dot with like a needle tool or something similar, that would be enough. Um, it's just when you're like with this one here, um, it's a little bit more tricky to make sure that the hole starts where you want it to be because the draw bit can move or it can slip or, you know, a hundred other things can go wrong, which could be super annoying. Okay, so these ones have holes in them. Um, so I'll just show you what I do. Is I usually start with, of course, these um, draw bits are interchangeable, and you can buy, you know, a bunch of really small ones on eBay for, you know, two or three dollars. And I know there's some on Etsy as well. So 
they're really not hard to come by. I mean, you can buy them from the hardware store as well. It's just, it's probably cheaper. And I don't drive, so, you know, it's easier for me to shop online. Right, so and these are the ones that you get on, um, like, eBay, for example. And they are, I think I got this one for, like, $3. And it came with 10 or 15 little um, drill bits. So, you know, they're really not expensive. Um, and they really, really are handy. So, But because I have two, I have one that has a really small drill bit and one that has a fairly large drill bit. So. Um, and what I do, when I start, when I start, I'll use the thinner one and I'll slowly um, widen the the hole with the bigger one. Just it's probably not necessary, but that's my process, and I feel like it avoids things like um, cracking or you know the clay splitting or something like that. And that really is all there is to it. Now I've got a lovely um, hole in here that should be. I mean, this isn't finished, but I'll show you the jump ring fits beautifully in there. So this one, because it's got mica powders on it, it will still need a surface treatment, so a resin or a something. Let's grab my little jump ring. And of course, always open your jump ring like this. Never pull it open that way because you put more stress on the metal. Um, and the other thing that happens is um, you can distort, or you more likely than not will distort the um, the circle so it will become it won't be a circle at the end of it okay and then I'm just going to bring these two back together And there it is. It's as easy as that. And now I can put my little ribbon or my string or chain or whatever through this part here and it will be a lovely little pendant. Okay, so it's much the same drilling a hole that hasn't been pre-started, but like I said, the drill bit can shift um, you know it can slip it can scratch your this one's got liquid clay on the top of it um you know even if, if you have resin try that sentence again if you had resin over it um the resin isn't quite as forgiving as the liquid clay it scratches a lot more um easily and it, it it's just super difficult so what i do is i use a sharp tool like my needle tool and I actually poke a hole more or less where I want where I want it to be this is of course a lot harder um, on the resin so it's probably a good idea to make your holes before you put your surface um, sealant or whatever on it so. So I'll poke a hole and then I'll start with my um, smaller drill bit and very slowly just make a hole. So 
So obviously my jump ring will never ever fit through there. I mean, it could if I forced it, but it will be a problem. When um, deciding where to put your hole, just make sure that there is enough clay on all sides of the hole so that um, it doesn't it doesn't wear out. So I made my mum one of the first pieces of jewelry that I ever made was a little flower pendant for my mum, which was this one here. Um, but I put the holes too close to the edge of my little flower petals, and so she wore it a lot. And the um, the clay actually wore out and broke and there, there was no recovery from from that you know it was cactus so um, it was completely destroyed and I then had to well actually made another one but you know this was for my mum so it wasn't a big deal whereas if this was for a paying customer that would be you know devastating so just make sure that when you put the holes in your your finished pieces that there's enough clay on all sides of the hole so that it's a little bit more secure in there so you might want to put it down a little bit and not have it um, you know not have it too close to the edge okay so so now I've done the the really thin hole, so now I'm just going to expand it a bit with my larger draw bit. Well, this is much the same for earrings as well, like if you're making dangling earrings and you need to put a hole in it, it's, you know, it's not just for pendants. Alright, that's it. And this one is ready for its jump ring as well. Just put one of those out. Oopsie. And that's that. So there it is. So I hope you found this a little bit more comprehensive and a little bit more um, complete and less chaotic than um, last night's broadcast. And again, I apologize sincerely for yesterday. That was, it's just not a good day for me. Um, so if you have any questions or any comments or if I didn't explain something in a way that you could understand it, please, please, please just um, send me a message or even just leave a comment on this video, even if it's not live and I will get it um, later on and I will do my best to respond to you quickly. Um, and if anyone is keen on seeing how I put either the resin or the liquid clay on my um, pieces, please, please let me know and I will try and do a video on that. And then the other thing that I just want to quickly mention is that today is day 13, which is the penultimate day of this um, this two week challenge journey that I have been on and it has been it's been exciting and it's been trying and I have enjoyed every minute of it so for those of you who have stuck along with me throughout two weeks of um, babble and me just um, rambling on camera thank you very much for that 
and hopefully I will see you later tonight um, for today's project. So until then, bye.